Hey Howlers, here is your next installment from where the mountain meets the moon. You can enjoy looking at all the grape hyacinths that are coming up here in front of the school and the garden beds. Minley and the Buffalo Boy push through the crowd as the sun burned the tops of their heads. Minley, used to the spare harvest of her village, couldn't help gaping at the tall mounds of food for sale at the Market of Green Abundance. The street and open courtyard were filled with umbrella-covered stands and stalls, flaunting jade-colored cabbages, curled cucumbers, purple eggplants, and tangy oranges. Glossy sugared hawthorn berries, like rubies on a stick, made Minley's mouth water. I don't see the king anywhere, Minley said. Well, maybe he's not here yet, the buffalo boy said. I don't know if I'll find him here, Minley said. Now, in the daylight, the buffalo boy's friend didn't seem as, as extraordinary. What would the king be doing at a street market anyway? She said he'd be here, so he will, the buffalo boy said, his mouth making a stubborn line. Hey, get away from that, a vendor yelled as the buffalo attempted to eat frosty green lettuce. The buffalo boy quickly pulled him away. Get your buffalo out of here, the vendor shouted, as red-faced as the radishes he was selling. I better take him away, the buffalo boy said, pulling the buffalo's head away from the arrays of tempting food. He's hungry. I should take him to pasture. I'll stay here, Minley said. You don't need to look for the king with me. Okay, the boy said. If you need a place to stay tonight, you know where my hut is. If not, maybe I'll see you around. Good luck. Thanks, Minley said. But as he carelessly waved goodbye, she realized that she might not see him again. Before he disappeared from sight, she grabbed the last coin out of her bag and ran to him. Wait, Minley said. Here, take this. No, the boy laughed. I don't need that. You keep it. But, Minley started, but it already turned around. Goodbye, she heard him call, and the buffalo snorted a farewell as well. Minley smiled wryly to herself. Now what, Minley thought as she wandered past stalls, weaving around merchants and customers. How am I supposed to find the king here? Please, spare a piece of fruit for an old man, a voice creaked. Minley turned around and saw a wrinkled, poor man begging at a peach stand. He was dirty and bent, and his clothes looked as if they were made from rags used to wash floors. Please, he begged the peach vendor. I'm so thirsty. One small peach, your smallest? Go away, old man, the fat vendor said. No money, no peach. Please, the beggar said again weakly. Pity a tired old man. Get away from here, you worthless beggar, the vendor spat out, or I'll call the guards on you. The vendor's loud voice had attracted attention from passers-by, and a small crowd began to form in front of the peach stand. It's disgraceful to treat an old man like that, someone murmured. Just give him a peach. All of you are so generous with my property, the vendor glared at the crowd. If you care so much, buy him a peach. As Minley watched the beggar's hands outstretched and shaking with hunger, she felt a sharp pang inside her. It reminded her of Ba, reaching out with his last chopstick full of rice for her fish. The copper coin she had offered to the buffalo boy was warm in her hand. She could almost feel her heart beating against its round edges. Here, she said handing the vendor the coin. Then she picked the largest peach on the stand and handed it to the old man. He bowed to her gratefully and eagerly ate the peach. Forgetting about the inner city and the palace for the moment, Minley watched him. In fact, as if under a spell, the whole crowd stood and watched him swallow the fruit until he held a peach pit in his hand. Thank you, the beggar said in a much stronger voice, and he bowed to the onlooking people. The peach was so delicious. I wish for all of you to be able to taste it. If you would humor an old man and stay a little while, I'll share my good fortune. The old man took a small stick out of his pocket and bent down. In the dirt next to the black bricks, he dug a small hole and planted his peach pit. He stuck his stick right upright in the little mound and then asked for water. Min Lee, now completely fascinated, took out her water jug and handed it to him. As he poured water onto his stick, it trembled and 
Was she imagining it? It seemed to grow. And it was growing. The stick grew higher and higher and thicker and thicker until it was the width of Min Lee's arm. When she could no longer see the top of it, pink flowers and branches began to blossom out of it. As the sweet scent of the flowers filled the air, Min Lee realized the stick had become a peach tree. The crowd of people seemed to realize this too as they all gaped at it open-mouthed. Even the stingy vendor left his fruit stand to stare at it in awe. Like pink snow, the petals fell from the tree and made a soft carpet on the dirt. Green leaves sprouted, and as they cascaded over the branches, pale moon-colored balls like pearls developed. Almost as if they were small balloons being blown with air, they grew into round fruit, blushing pink and red as they developed. Soon the tree was heavy with them, and the air was full of the enchanting smell of ripe peaches. Children gathered around and stared longingly at the luscious fruit while the adults gulped with their mouths watering. Finally, the old man reached up, plucked a peach from the tree, and handed it to one of the people in the crowd. Please, he said, waving his hand, help yourself. The crowd needed no other urging. Young children climbed the tree and passed down the fruit while the taller adults simply stretched and grabbed. A boy with a tired horse climbed onto its back to reach an especially red peach that called him. Before long, everyone's mouths were full of soft, sweet peach flesh and groans of delight. Even the peach vendor, his stand forgotten, stood under the tree with his eyes closed contentedly and peach juice dribbling out of his mouth. Min Lee, however, didn't join in the feast of peaches. If I hadn't been eating peaches all the way to the city, Min Lee said to herself, I'd be the first one climbing the tree. But as she was slightly tired of peaches, Min Lee saw what no one else did. She noticed that every time someone plucked a peach from the tree, a peach from the fruit stand disappeared. The beggar is using the vendor's peaches for his tree. Min Lee laughed to herself as she glanced at him through the fruit-eating crowd. He was watching with an amused look, and suddenly Min Lee saw that the beggar wasn't really that old at all. He must be a magician. Maybe he can help me get into the inner city. Min Lee edged toward him. As she weaved her way to him, the last peach was picked from the tree and the leaves and branches began to disappear. The tree trunk seemed to shrivel into itself and it grew thinner and shorter. The crowd had finished their peaches and the ground was littered with peach pits. When Min Lee finally reached the beggar, the tiny twig of the tree vanished underneath the pile of peach pits and the beggar was turning to leave. Wait, Min Lee said and grabbed his arm. However, as Min Lee took hold of his sleeve, it pulled back and a glint of gold shone. Hastily, the beggar pushed back his sleeve, but the quick glance was enough for Min Lee to see that he wore a gold bracelet in the shape of a dragon. They stared at each other as Min Lee's quick thinking mind somersaulted. Only the imperial family is allowed to use the image of a dragon, dragon had said. Everyone knows a golden dragon is always and only worn by kings said the buffalo boy. The words flashed in her mind and Minley could scarcely breathe. <gasps> You're wearing a dragon, Minley gasped. Only the is allowed to wear a golden dragon. You must be, you must be. Where's that beggar? A loud, angry shout cut through the chaos. Minley recognized the vendor's voice. He stole the peaches. I'll get him. Quickly, the big beggar shook off Minley from his arm and began to run. She stared in shock as she finished her sentence. You must be, and Lee whispered to the ragged, disappearing figure, the king. <laughs>